Hello everyone, my name is Karen Barnett and I am an author and a speaker and I write novels set in our national parks. Uh, since I found out that this week is National Park Week and that the theme of the week was your park story, I thought this is really perfect because obviously I have park stories <laughs> and not just novels. I worked as a national park ranger uh, way back in the 90s and so I thought it would be fun to do a short video each day sharing some of my park memories. There are, I've already done five videos, so you can catch up on those if you like. And today is number six, and it's actually gonna be my last one uh, for this series because I have a crazy busy weekend planned. And today I thought, I have talked about five different things that happened to me when I worked at Mount Rainier. And today I wanna to talk about kind of life after Mount Rainier. So after I left Mount Rainier, I had actually gotten married and uh, my husband and I had moved to Salem, Oregon, and I applied to work for Oregon State Parks. And when I interviewed at Silver Falls State Park, which is the largest of the state parks in Oregon, just an absolutely beautiful forest park uh, with uh, 10 different waterfalls you can see on a single trail. It is really the, the crown jewel of the Oregon State Park system. And I sat down with the visitor services uh, director, I can't remember exactly what her title was, but she's in charge of visitor services. And I interviewed for their naturalist position. And of course I had come from a big crew at Mount Rainier. We had lots of naturalists and then lots of park rangers who did all kinds of things up there. And that's kind of how I was expecting things to work. Uh, maybe very naively, <laughs> but when I sat down with her for the interview, at the end, she asked if I had any questions. And so I asked, well, I'm curious, how big is your naturalist staff? If I take this job, uh, or if I'm offered this job, how many people will I be working with? And she looked at me very deadpan and said, well, if we hire you, there will be one. <laughs> and I just, I was really taken aback because I had, I had not expected to be in a, in a place where I would be the only uh, interpreter, the only naturalist on staff. I ended up taking or receiving that job, getting offered that job and taking it and just having the time of my life because it was a lot of pressure to be the only naturalist on staff. They had a lot of, you know, maintenance rangers and people who did various other projects. I worked in the campground and um, all kinds of things. But I was the only one working with uh, like doing guided hikes and campfire programs and school groups. And I was kind of the whole show. And that was actually fun because I got to create my own programs and kind of talk about the things that I thought were really unique to this park. But besides the programs, one thing I learned that was quite different here at, Sil at Silver Falls uh, in the uh, temperate rainforest of Oregon, very different from where I had been in the subalpine of Mount Rainier. It was the wildlife, it was different. And one of my discoveries was this cute little creature called a spotted skunk. <laughs> and if you've never seen a spotted skunk, we're all familiar with striped skunks, but spotted skunks are a little bit smaller and they're really adorable. And I'll post a picture just below. But uh, spotted skunks, we called them cute little stinkers. And they really were. Very, they are nocturnal, so most of the visitors never saw them. But one thing we learned our first week, uh, any new staff coming on who might be dealing with things like garbage cans and such, was if you were going to empty a garbage can or take anything out of a garbage can first, in the, first thing in the morning, was to kick the garbage can a few times uh, to see if it made any noise because sometimes critters could get in the garbage cans overnight. We didn't have fancy bear-proof ones or anything like that. They just had a lid on them with a board that would make sure that the lid flopped down, but you could still get raccoons and things in them. So uh, I never experienced this, um, though I did empty some of those garbage cans, but uh, there was a gal my second summer at Silver Falls who had just come on, it was her very first week, and she was emptying garbage cans. And there was one garbage can where the bag had fallen all the way inside it. It didn't have much in there. But so she reached, you know, had to bend way down to the bottom of that garbage can and pull the bag up and ended up getting 
sprayed in the face by a spotted skunk. And I don't know, I cannot even imagine how awful that was. I think I heard she was physically sick after that. Um, she ended up quitting uh, about a week later. I don't know for sure that it was related to that event, but it wouldn't surprise me. I'm not sure I would want to keep working if my memory of that park was always getting sprayed in the face by a skunk. Poor thing. Uh, I had my own experience with a spotted skunk when we were trying to trap a family, a, a family of feral cats that was living in a garage storage area just behind the visitor center. And I really wanted to capture this mama cat and her little kittens and see if we could get them rehomed because they were um, hunting birds and squirrels and stuff right around the visitor center. And people would see the mama cat snatch a squirrel that they were watching and that kind of upset people. So we wanted to capture them and rehome them. And uh, one of the maintenance guys had brought out uh, one of these live traps and he was like, oh, sure, we can get them, no problem. Well, the first day we got one or two kittens, and the next day we got one or two more. Uh, and, and finally, we were down to just one last, I don't know if it's the mama cat or one of the kittens, but we just had one more to catch. And so I had gone out first thing in the morning because I don't want to leave them in the trap all day. I checked first thing in the morning when I got there, and I could see something in the trap. And I realized that it was not a kitten. <laughs> I got on my radio and I called um, my friend over in maintenance. I said, hey, uh, so we called or we caught a really cute kitten in the trap. And he said, oh, that's good. All right. And I waited a minute. And I said, so it's it's got black fur with cute little white polka dots. <laughs> And he was quiet for a long time on the radio and then he came back he's like oh no <laughs> so he came out with like this long pole to try and open the trap and let the skunk out the skunk sprayed everywhere and that garage smelled like skunk it was it was very skunky and smelled for years after that I just went back um, this past year, my husband and I went back for a visit and discovered that they had totally converted that garage storage area into the most adorable little movie theater with log benches. It's really sweet. And thankfully, it no longer smells like spotted skunk. <laughs> so if you ever get a chance to come out to Oregon, make sure you visit Silver Falls State Park. It is absolutely beautiful. It was considered for national park status at one point, but just didn't quite make the cut. So I think Oregon State Parks is fortunate to have it, and it was a joy to work there. So thank you for sharing in my park stories. And if you're interested in my park novels, you can uh, find information about them uh, at karenbarnettbooks.com. And I'll put the link down here in the comments and on the screen so you can't miss it. <laughs> I would love to have you try and I would love to have you try out some of my books, read some of my books, and uh, I'd love to get to know you. So send me an email, let me know your park story.